Hi everyone, it's Andrea and today I'm not going to do anything to do with books, which is unusual because normally I'm all about the books. But today I'm going to show you one of my other collections before I showed you some of my Marilyn collection, um, only a small part of it. So this time I'm going to show you part of my camera collection because I also take a lot of photos, do a lot of photography and I love collecting cameras. Now, obviously I'm not going to show you my digital camera because I'm using that to film this. But the cameras I'm referring to are cameras that take that old-fashioned thing called film. All these cameras either take 35mm film, 120 film or a Polaroid um, Impossible Project film. So um, I do have cameras that don't work and I'm going to show you those first and then I'm going to show you the ones that do work. And these ones I actually do use and where I have used one, if I've got a picture, I will put it up here somewhere maybe? You'll see of the picture that I took using that camera. So we'll start with the first ones and they're the ones that don't work. I'm going to have to lean in and out of the frame here because they're spread out everywhere. There are that many of them. So the first one that doesn't work is this very cheap little plastic camera called an Alto. Now these were actually given out like free at gas stations or from magazine subscriptions. Doesn't work, did try it, ran out of film through it, didn't work so that was a waste of a film. But hey, these make nice display pieces and I have them in my bedroom on top of one of the, the units. So I'll just pop that one there. Now the next one that doesn't work is an Ilford Sportsman camera. This is a rangefinder or similar to a rangefinder. It takes 35mm film. I have used one of these, that's why I tried to get one that worked. This one sadly doesn't, which is a shame. Uh, but it's a nice looking old fashioned camera. Listen to that. Oh hang on, I've got to do. I don't know if you can hear that. That's the film wind, I love it. So yeah, this one I bought, but again, it's a nice looking camera, makes a lovely display piece. One day I will get a work in one of these. The next one is a camera that I used to use a lot back in the 90s. It was my second SLR camera and it's the Pentax P30T. Again, this doesn't work. It's got a lens on it. It's a 35 millimeter SLR camera. Um, and I would like to get another one because I've got several lenses. So that's this one. I love cameras. So yeah, I did like that one. And then another one I've got is the, um, and it's just pronounced it, Zeiss Icon, I, Iconto 522. Sadly, although this was in very good condition and the bellows are intact, the shutter doesn't really fire very well, or it doesn't fire at all. So it's a nice display piece. I love these folding cameras. I do have a folding camera that actually works as well, one of these types of cameras. So you will be seeing that later. So those are the four cameras I've got that don't work. Now the rest of these actually do work. And other than one or two, I've actually used them. So we're going to start with the compacts. So the first one I have is a Vivita Compact, which is the 357PZ series with a power zoom. So it's only a, it's not very exciting. It takes 35mm film. It's your bog standard compact that practically everybody had in the back in the day. And I've also got a Practica SK750 autofocus. Again, it's just a 35mm camera everybody had back in the day. This one I have used so I will put a picture up here so you can see it. It's a nice one. Um, again now most of these I have actually used. In fact I think I've used all of them. Yay! The next one is a Ricoh AF Multi. So it's called the Shot Master True Zoom Date because it's got a data back on it so you can actually Put the dates on the photos. I don't do that. I don't like that. I don't see the point in it. But that's just me. But it does take nice pictures. And again, I will put one up here so you can see what the picture looked like. I love cameras. Did you not notice? Another one I have is, and I've lens capped in the other room, is the Olympus AZ330 Super Super Zoom. As you can see, this is a bit of a chunker. Um, and this one works. Yeah. And it, it zooms out. 
and it zooms in <laughs> and I love the sound so yeah again this is a 35 millimeter film camera and I have used this one I do like this one it's actually got film in it at the moment it's got a roll of black and white um Adox Silver Max which is a lovely film I get all nerdy now uh, then I'm going to show you my one Polaroid camera, instant cameras, I love them, I don't love how much the film costs and the pictures aren't that great from them. But I have used this one a few times, I've put um, some Impossible Project uh, film through it. This one is the Polaroid P and it's in the silver one, it's sort of like a space agey one and it flips up like that. Um, and it still works. So like I said, I've taken pictures with it, and like I said, I will put one up here. Um, it's monkey, it's got dirt on it and dust, but so I have used that one. I do like it. It's a really weird sort of shape. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a Cybermat in Doctor Who in the early days. It's coming to get you. There you go. My geekiness is showing on through. Another camera I have and have used is the Nikon F55, which again is 35mm SLR camera. I actually took this to America with me a few years ago when I went to uh, California, to San Diego and Los Angeles. Uh, so that's a nice one. The only thing I don't like about this one, and again this one's got film in it, is that when you put the film in it winds the film all the way into the camera and then winds it back into the canister when you take the pictures. Now the only reason I don't like that is because then your numbering's back to front. I know. But it's still a nice camera and I do have another lens for it and I have used it a few times. I think I used it um, when I went up in a plane with my dad as well. Yeah, I think so. We're going to have a quick look at the oldest camera in my camera collection. And this dates from the 19, early, well, from around 1930. And it is a number two box brownie. I think it's a Model F. This was made in the UK. Um, they made them in America, Canada and the United Kingdom and this one is a UK one and on the little strap at the top you won't be able to see it but it says made in Great Britain number two brownie by Kodak Limited and again it's, this these cameras are so brilliant that even today it still works it's like nearly 90 years old and it still takes a picture and I will put one up here for you to see because I have used this one a couple of times. Next I'm going on to my toy camera which was a present for my other half and that is um, a remake of the old Diana F and this is one by the Lomography Company and this is the Diana F Buttercup. I love the colour! Now the only problem with these cameras is the whole point of them is they're not perfect and you get vignetting and light leaks that's the whole point of it it's the whole hipster movement but I always find that these take a roll film that rolls from one spindle to another so it doesn't go back on itself I always find that in this one it's very difficult for it doesn't wind tight enough in fact the only film I've never had a problem, the only type of film I've never had a problem of in one of these is an Ilford brand film. I've never had what is termed as a fat roll from this. I will put a, a link of what a roll of this stuff looks like up here so you can see. Um, but these make really nice big negatives and that's why I like them. But you only get a maximum of 16 and I usually go for the 12. The box bar only takes the same sort of film but you only get 8. Anyway. But I do like this one. I took it to Tenerife the first time I went. I still haven't developed all of those films. I've still got films to develop. Because I do all that myself. But it is cute. It's yellow. And it's got a green flash on it. It's so sweet. I do like to use it. It's a bit of fun. Uh, right. Next we have another 35mm camera. I picked this one up. I think it was quite cheap at a car boot sale. And this is the Yashica 108 multi program camera. It's just a, a bog standard SLR. It's got a, this is a, oh, a rubber hood, but it's a bit knackered. It's because they've uh, attached the lens cap to that and it's just ripped. So I, I don't really use the lens hood on this one. I don't use them at all. I should do, but I quite like lens flare on some, some images it looks quite nice on. Um, 
we'll go on to my other folding camera now. This one is the Ilford Prentice. I keep calling it an Ilford Precise, but it's actually called the Ilford Prentice. Um, it was made in England. It's the only camera I have that was actually made in England because the other Ilford camera was actually made in Germany. So this was actually made in England, which is why I wanted it. It's a British camera. I have used it. It still works. Everything looks fine on it. Again, this one takes the same kind of film as the Box Brownie and the Diana F. Again, you only get eight pictures out of this. Look how long this back is. Um, so you get a super sized negative. And the reason for this is that in the back in the day, you wouldn't get what we now term as end prints, which are the little prints you get from a negative that big. They literally would do what we would call what's called a contact print. In the fact that they put the negative on the paper and they put the light through it and it comes out at that size. So a negative that size would make a decent sized print. And that's how it worked. So I do like this one. I think it's so cute. And that's from around 1950 something. It's from the 50s. Um, I do have a couple of other cameras here. I have a Zeiss Icon Contaflex, which I have used. This one's very odd in the sense that when you use it, The shutter's always closed. It, it not the shutter, but the, the apertures are closed until you fire the shutter, and then they close automatically. So you, you've got to use it. In it. I've only used this once. It, it you know, I wasn't very good with it because it's got no light meter in it, and I'm metering by gas work basically, and it's got very very stiff reels. It needs a bit of lubrication, I think, a bit of oil to get it moving, and a bit of cleaning. But I will do that. Um, but you have to do it in a certain way so you don't break the mechanism and you break the sh shutter. So it's very nice. It's still in its original case, as you can see. And these, I just love the way these old cameras look. They are like bricks. They weigh a ton. Next one I'm going to show you is a Twitter... Uh, twin lens reflex. No. Through the lens, I can't even remember what it is. A TLR, a twin lens, yeah, TLR camera. Oh, do you know what? It's been a long day. Um, and this one is the first, what they class as medium format film these days. So it's a, it's a film that takes 120 roll film, and I bought this for 15 pounds off of eBay, and it's the Lomo Lubatel 166 Universal. Now, unlike the majority of the cameras where you actually look through the eyepiece like that, you bring it up. The, uh, to an extent you do it with the box brownie as well you actually look down into it if I turn that upside down or that way you might be able to see some of the books you see you look through it like that so you look down and this is your focusing lens and this is your taking lens and th th that's how they work and they make those lovely square negatives I absolutely I wanted to try this because I never thought I'd be able to afford a better one but there you go, that's another story. Um, and I do use it. The only thing I find with this one is that the back opens very, very quickly. Very, very... Um, if I can do it now. So you have it locked like that. But I've noticed that it, I've had it happen that it's it's moved back into its open position. And it's come up when I've got film in it, which is obviously not good because that knackers everything up. And we don't want that. And you just close it by... I can't remember how you close it. That's just so typical. Like that. That's it. And it closes down in a box like that. Next, I'm going to show you um, a Russian rangefinder I have, which is a Zorki 4. It's got on the back made in the USSR. So, Zorki 4 is a Russian rangefinder. It's based on the Leica. And that's one thing I will never be able to afford, I don't think. Um, and yeah, this takes really nice pictures. I've, I have used this. I want to use this again. It, it's just a lovely camera to use. Um, they're very odd, these rangefinders, because you have to load them from the bottom. The whole thing comes out. But I will be using that one again soon. So this is my... It's a Zorki 4. And it just looks so nice. And you can change the lenses on the, these ones. So 
you can do this uh, what we call range finder because you look through here and you focus through here and yeah it's just oh so wonderful it's such a nice nice camera i'm gonna look at you through it and when you look through it you can see a little orange or a little yellow wheel and there's two of them and you just turn this until it matches up and when it matches up that's when the camera's in focus and it's it's bizarre it takes some getting used to but it does mean that your photos are really really sharp so i really like this one now my main film go-to camera now is a canon you might have noticed I like Canons because I'm using the Canon Dig. And this is Canon A1. I do have two other lenses for this one. I have a stinky, stinky, stinky one and a big, big, long one. Uh, but this is the uh, standard lens. And this has gone to Tenerife with me. It's gone to London with me. And so this is now my go-to camera. Now these cameras can suffer from something called camera squeal, Canon squeal. Um, this one doesn't. I have had the light seals replaced and the guy who did that also checked the film speeds and uh, sent it back and said, yes, it's fine. It's as, as close to what it should be. It's, it's perfect. So I really like this. I bought this at a car boot sale. It wasn't cheap. It, I think it cost me £20 at that boot sale. But it's such a classic look and I do use it a lot. And I will show you a picture here of some cameras I took with this Canon camera in London as well. I mean, obviously there'll be pictures up through all of these um, for you. Now, there's one left, one camera left, and this is my Pride and Joy camera. This is the camera I wanted. I would like another one. This is a later model of the, the kind of camera it is. And I was inspired to get back into film photography by Discovery and Vivian Mayer and her fantastic work with a Rollerflex. And I was lucky enough to be able to buy a Rollerflex T from somebody I am friends with. Um, now the Rollerflex T is, this model is from the 1970s and it does, it's a cheaper version of the main Rollerflex. It's based on the Rolly Cord, which was the cheaper version. So it's it's sort of like an in-between version of the Roller Cord and the full Rollerflex. Um, but it has your, your lovely winder here and it's just, it's so beautiful. If you have a look, again, it's one of those twin lens that you look for, twin lenses. So you look through it, you focus with this one. Well, you don't you actually focus with the knob on the side, but you focus, that one focuses, that one takes. And it's just a beautiful piece of engineering. Again, this one doesn't have a timer in it, but I've got some lovely pictures on this using uh, not a timer, uh, a light meter using the uh, light meter app that I have on my smartphone. So you can do it. I've also used what they call as the Sunny 16 rule. So if you're afraid of taking pictures without a light meter, don't be. I was to start with. I started reading up on it and I've not had a problem since. This camera is my pride and joy. I love it. I haven't used it for a while. There is a roll of film in it that I want to finish. And again, it takes those 120 rolls of film that make the lovely square negatives. So, <sighs> and the leather smells new. And this camera is in, was in such good condition when I bought it, it had pr practically never been used. Um, there was not a mark on the lenses, even the cases in pretty good condition. It's not perfect condition, but it's not far back. I do love these oh let's look through that and focus that way i think it looks great and there's one thing about these cameras when you take them out someone will always stop and chat to you about it first time i did it someone said oh you don't see them very often oh i used to have one of them oh gosh that's a lovely camera people will stop and talk to you about it so if you're afraid of people stopping you why are you taking photos in the first place out in public and B, don't use one of these because these ones do inspire people to say, oh, what a lovely camera, can I, oh, let's have a look. So I'm just going to leave this one here because this is my, I do love this camera. <laughs> so the, that is my camera collection. I have cameras everywhere now. I'm going to have to put them all away, which is a pain. But I wanted to show them to you because I, I want you to think. No, I want you to to see that I'm not all about the books, although the books I do love. I've been a reader for a long time, but I'm also big into photography. As was my grandfather. My grandfather was a, a very, very prolific photographer, 
very very good and he did his own developing and he even built his own cameras from time to time I can't do that but I can do my own developing and I used to do my own printing which is something I would love to do again at some point so if you want any more information on any of the cameras or if you you know let me know and I can we can always talk about one of them in depth um, if you want to see any of my photographic work whether it's film or digital I will leave some links down below I have two Flickr accounts and a blog um, one Flickr account is purely film photography and the other Flickr account is purely digital so they're two separates and my blog is travels with my camera at WordPress but I will leave links to all those three down below so you can have a look at them if you want to so I mean I haven't updated my photography blog for like a year nearly um, but I will be very soon it's because I've nearly run out of space on it and I'm rambling so yeah so that's my camera collection I hope you've enjoyed this video I just thought we'd break up the books for a while I'm gonna go and put these cameras away and have a cup of tea and start reading something else or I might even develop a roll of film because I've got a film in the tank yeah I might do yeah I think I might do that so if you've liked this video don't forget to leave a comment before below big, give me the big thing give me the big thumbs up don't forget to